Let's go ahead and take a look at this pressure map. Now at first there's a lot of numbers, it's obviously showing the United States, but let's go ahead and try to make some sense of this information. Before we go into the details of the map, let's talk about a key word, barometer. The barometer is a weather tool that is used to measure air pressure. And in the word itself, it's literally telling you what it does. Now meter obviously is a unit or word that means to measure things. That's kind of why meter sticks and centimeters and millimeters, those are all used with that word meter in it. Well, this isn't much different. Now it has the word bar at the beginning of it, which actually has an origin to the meaning of weight or pressure. So a barometer is a tool that measures pressure. Now, incidentally, the numbers you're seeing in front of you are a unit of millibars. So millibars are a unit of pressure. And the lines that are connecting these numbers are called ISO bars. Now, ISO means same. So as you were to follow any one of these lines, it would be connecting areas of equal pressure, ISO bar. That means for 1,020 on this particular line, if I was to follow it, it would cross over several states and locations across this part of the map, but it is showing that there is the same amount of pressure in that spot. Now, the other thing to look at here, too, is that there is a line that circles around, and there is no number on that particular line. So how do we find the value for that? Well, there's an organization to these isobars. So if you look at the line just to the, just to the right of it, you can see 1,024. 1,024. If you go over another line, you see 1,020 again. Okay. And then you see 1,016. Well, just looking at this line, this line, and this line, there seems to be some kind of a jump of four millibars from one line to the next. So what's happening over here to this 1,020? Well, the only way this can be occurring is if this line of 1,020 actually didn't end here. This is where the map ended, but somewhere off of the screen to the upward part of where I can't really point off the screen here, it must loop around and connect to it. So there is this, this decline of four millibars. So knowing this is 1,024 and the next one over is 1,020 again, this next one has to be four less than 1,020. This location right here is an area of 1,016 millibars, a lower area pressure, which is why there's an L inside of it. Now over here you can see some H's, there are two H's in this marked area of 1032. So this general area that kind of circles around Portland, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, all around encompassing those states has a high pressure area. And over here you can see another two H's, and this is a pretty big chunk of high pressure area near Austin, Dallas, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Omaha, St. Louis, and Memphis. All these locations have relatively the same pressure. Now, we talked in a previous lesson about how air would move in a local area. You know, where it's over water or if it's over land, it would move one way or the other. But the constant rule was this. High pressure always moves towards low pressure. That means at a larger system, if these are areas of high pressure, they would be pushing air towards billings, just as Kansas City might push air towards Billings. But if you look, not labeled, this is also an area of lower pressure, so it is quite possible air could be pushed this way. Now that's the thing about predicting the weather is that because of these systems, it's not really predictable, but we just have chances or likelihood of these events occurring. So that's essentially how you would read a pressure map. Each line represents amounts of equal pressure as you follow them. And as you go from one line to the next, there is an interval on this map in particular of four millibars, either increasing or decreasing. And these, again, are called isobars. And just generally speaking, as you look over just to see how air is gonna move in this time or whatever, whatever time of year this would be, you just basically look to see where high pressure is and where low pressure is. Now, one last comment about the barometer before I let you go. And that is when you look at a barometer, you do have uh, some words on there as well. And some might be saying uh, fair, very dry. And then there's one in the middle that says change. And off to the left where it's lower, you get things like rain or stormy. Well, when areas have low pressure, there's a likelihood that they may have rain or a stormy condition. And that makes sense because air is pushing towards that direction, bringing in the weather that they would then um, have. 
So higher pressure areas are basically pushing things away, which then clouds will be pushed away. It'll be a very dry or a fair type of weather system. So a barometer can be a quick way to kind of identify what type of weather you're going to have. You know, this concept, while it is, uh, can be very straightforward. It, you know, it takes some time to digest, so just don't put too much pressure on yourself. Huh?